Can we only assign the RNA stereodescriptors to carbon atoms, or can other atoms have stereodescriptors as well? Hello everyone, Victor from OrganicChemistryTutor.com is here, and yes, other atoms can have the RNA stereodescriptors as well, for as long as they are attached to four different groups of either atoms or electrons. So for instance, here is an example, and in this example we want to assign the RNA stereodescriptor to the nitrogen an atom in the following molecule. Notice that sometimes molecules can have counter ions, like we have a chlorine counter ion in this case. That counter ion is completely irrelevant because it is not actually directly attached to our nitrogen. Also, the fact that nitrogen has the charge, over here it is a positive charge, that part is also completely irrelevant because it doesn't really constitute a group and the charge by itself is merely a bookkeeping tool for us. So whenever you see something like that, you should just ignore those things completely. In order for us to assign the RNA stereodescriptors to the nitrogen atom in this molecule, we need to do a layer by layer analysis just like we've learned in the previous tutorial. On the first level here, what we are going to see is that nitrogen is connected to a hydrogen and three other carbon atoms. Since hydrogen has the lowest priority than either of the carbon atoms, it's going to have the lowest priority overall and we are going to give it priority number four. On the next level, however, we can see that we've got three carbons over here, so we have carbon, carbon, and carbon. We have three hydrogens attached to that side of the molecule, and I also have carbon and two hydrogens uh, over here. So at this point, we already have our first difference. We have three carbons, which is going to give us the highest priority on the blue level. Then we have one carbon, and then we have no carbons and only hydrogens. Thus, if we assign our priorities, we are going to get a picture like that. So at this point, we can go ahead and assign the stereo descriptor because our stereo center looks like this, where the lowest priority is looking away. It's on the dash, it's looking away from the observer, which means that we don't need to move the stereo center in space in any way or form. We can assign uh, our stereo descriptor as is. And if I construct my Newman projection, I will have this picture in which I can clearly see that my priorities follow the counterclockwise pattern, which means that this is an S stereo descriptor. Now, what if I actually have a structure looking like this? In this molecule, there is a very important feature that is kind of hiding away from us. And that feature is an implicit electron pair. And because of this implicit electron pair, we can have two possible versions of this molecule, where we have the ethyl group, this part of the molecule, either looking at us or looking away from us. And importantly, these two are different molecules. They can be in an equilibrium with each other because uh, whenever we have an electron pair and atom, it can generally relatively easily flip uh, from one configuration to another one, but nonetheless, these are different molecules. So what am I going to do in this case? Well, the important thing to remember here is that if I look at those two possible structures, the electron pair is located on the sp3 orbital, and the sp3 orbital is directional, which means that if I uh, represent that with a line, either a dash or a wedge, or even a straight, just regular plane line, depending on how my stereo center is looking like, then I can redraw my molecule like this, and we need to make sure that we always emphasize the directionality, as I mentioned a moment ago. Either the electron pair can be sitting on a plane line or on a wedge or a dash. Essentially treat an electron line as if it was a real group sitting on the atom of interest for us. Next thing is that whenever we are assigning the priority, the electron pair is always going to have the lowest possible priority. It means that it actually has the lower priority than even a hydrogen atom. As it has the lowest possible priority, that is going to have a number four priority in a molecule. So if I take, for instance, a molecule number one, 
this one over here uh, with the electron pair being on a dash, then what I'm going to get is the following structure. If I were to assign my priorities, I'm going to get them in this order and I encourage you to go ahead and check my calculations here to make sure that I didn't mess anything up. So if I have my stereo center in this particular stereo configuration with the lowest priority being on the dash, that means that I can very easily construct my stereo center with the number four looking away. Uh, which gives me the following stereochemical assignment. I can see that the rest of my priorities are following counterclockwise pattern, which gives me the S stereo configuration for this molecule. Okay, here is another example. In this example, we are interested in assigning the R and S stereo descriptor to the sulfur atom. And the first thing that I really like to do in cases like that is to make sure that I have all of the... Um, electrons, all of the atoms, everything accounted for. In this particular case, we're going to have an electron pair on the sulfur, and uh, since oxygen is already on the dash and we have two plane lines, it means that my electron pair is going to be on the wedge in this case. Always remember that any kind of stereo center that you are dealing with is always going to have a structure where we have two plane lines, one wedge, one dash, uh, and we can draw it like this, or we can draw it in the other direction like that, which is exactly the same thing. So, once I have uh, my groups assigned, uh, and when I have the group's directionality uh, plainly shown, I can go ahead and uh, assign the priorities to my group. Here is the molecule redrawn one more time, just so we have a little bit more space to work on. And this is what I get once I assign priorities to the groups that are connected to the sulfur atom. Notice that here, like in one of our previous cases, the fact that we have a plus on sulfur and minus on the oxygen is completely irrelevant. The only things that are relevant is the nature of the atoms and which order they are connected to each other. Here, since my electron pair is looking at me and the electron pair has the lowest possible priority, that means that uh, when I construct my stereo center, I'm going to have something like that, in which case, due to the fact that the lowest priority atom is not looking away, uh, we'll have to do what I like to call a double flip, in which case we are going to exchange the positions of two pairs of groups at the same time, uh, making sure that my lowest priority looking away from me. If I do something like that, then uh, this is the structure of the stereo center that I am going to have. Now I can go ahead and assign the stereo descriptor. Using my Newman projection, I can clearly see that we are going to have a clockwise pattern, and the clockwise pattern results in the R stereo descriptor. So now you'll be ready to tackle those tricky questions in which your instructor will be asking you to assign the R and S stereo descriptors to heteroatoms like nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, etc. Granted that those questions are not very often seen on the exam, you can still expect something like that from time to time, especially if your instructor likes uh, trickery on the exams and questions of that sort. And to conclude this series on the RNS theory descriptors and the CIP rules, in the next video I'm going to talk about how we tackle double and triple bonds and how those fit into the CIP rules. Hope you like this tutorial and I will see you in the next one!